This is Radio Truth, a series of commentaries by Dr. Michael Parenti. Michael Parenti is an activist and internationally known award-winning author and scholar. His recent books include The Assassination of Julius Caesar and Super Patriotism. His latest book, The Culture Struggle, will be released in November 2005. For further information, please visit his website, michaelparenti.org. Creating the Poor Many compassionate people castigate the very rich and powerful for their lack of concern for the poor. But I've come to the conclusion that the very rich are anything but indifferent to the poor. They're quite mindful of keeping the poor in their place, of having them work as hard as possible for as little as possible. The very rich have a real concern that the working poor do not become too elevated in their collective class condition. Indeed, the owning class sees such a development as threatening to its own vital interests. Throughout the ages, the rich have argued that the poor are the authors of their own poverty. In 17th century England, impoverished people were thought to be the victims of their own, quote, idle, irregular, and wicked courses. Little has changed since then. In 1995, Republican leader Newt Gingrich reduced poverty to a matter of personal inclination. Quote, I am prepared to say to the poor, you have to learn new habits. The habits of being poor don't work, unquote. Meanwhile, Gingrich tirelessly pursued policies to enlarge the ranks of the poor, just as our Republican leadership in the White House and Congress do today. They fight to shift still more of the tax burden onto low- and middle-income people. They fight to eliminate the minimum wage, to cut spending for public housing, and to abolish school lunches, food stamps, and aid to families with dependent children. They support enormous tax cuts for the corporate rich. They do everything they can to deregulate business activities, downgrade jobs, downsize workforces, and break labor unions. All policies that have led to both deeper and more widespread poverty and greater and greater accumulations of wealth for the super-rich. For affluent people, the poor are less than human, demoralized creatures who seem to prefer squalor and misery, freeloaders who live off the rest of us. When they do work, they want to be paid too much for too little effort, according to the super-rich. And when they organize into unions, they become troublesome barriers to productivity and prosperity. All this we hear again and again. And yet, you'll find that there's no real mass support in the general American public for the mean-spirited cuts that have been imposed by a Republican Congress and White House. One survey found that 80% of the public felt that society and government had a moral obligation to alleviate poverty. About the same number reject the right-wing argument that poverty is to be blamed on the poor themselves rather than on the material economic conditions that beset the poor. But thanks to conservative disinformationists who claim that 90% of government anti-poverty funds failed to reach the poor, the public thought the programs were administered with much waste. In fact, the exact opposite is true. Only about 10% of poverty funds are spent on administrative costs, with the rest going to recipients. Another bit of conservative disinformation frequently mouthed by right-wing members of Congress and media commentators is that $5.3 trillion has been spent on welfare in the past 30 years. This bit of fiction is seldom challenged. In fact, the actual figure is less than a tenth of that, about $400 billion in 30 years. $400 billion, what the Pentagon spends in a year. In contrast to right-wing Republicans, those of more liberal persuasion see poverty as a problem created by hard times, substandard schools and housing, deteriorating neighborhoods, a lack of much-needed public programs. If people are poor, it's not because they're lazy and irresponsible. Seventy percent of the families that live in poverty have someone, at least one person, working full time. If they're poor, it's because they're being paid poverty wages and they have to pay high prices for things and are burdened with all sorts of regressive taxes. Poverty, then, is a product of the accumulation of wealth. The wealthy need the poor. 
the wealthy live off the backs of the poor. This is Michael Parenti for Radio Truth. This commentary was produced by the LA Sound Posse and may be freely copied and distributed.